By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing a game of Commander 60 card Singleton Underpowered. And if, when I say that, do you have an idea what I'm actually going to play? <laughs> maybe, maybe you don't, but basically uh, I'm playing against Gideon. We're both playing with two Singleton decks, so that means 60 cards and one card of each singleton, except for the basic lands. And kind of, just to make it more fun, I said, why not add a commander? So we're both playing with a commander as well. And um, I know Gideon is playing with a card called Rubina Soul Singer. So he's playing with the colors blue, white, and green. And I'm playing with Sinastian Falconer. So I'm playing with the colors white, uh, sorry, the colors green and red. Now, maybe you're wondering, what's up with all these rule sets? I don't get it. And, I completely understand. Basically, it's all about having fun. But if you want to know more about the specific rule sets, um, I'm kind of explaining how we've played, what rules we followed in the description below. So simply go to the description, read it over there. And I've also put some links in that description to interesting blogs and Facebook groups that are actually um, playing this and playing different variances of this. So one group is playing Seven Point Singleton. Another group is playing a um, an EDH commander format, also with a point system. So by following the links, you can kind of get more info on that. So for now, uh, before we go to the actual games, I'm first going to do deck decks. Obviously, I've got pictures of both of these decks. I'm going to start with Gideon's deck in a moment. But if you want to go straight to the match, as always, you can find a timestamp. Click on the timestamp. That will take you straight to the games. And it is a best of five match, by the way, before I forget to tell you about that. So let's start with the deck deck of Gideon. And here we see the deck of Gideon. So his deck is under command of Rubina Soulsinger. Rubina Soulsinger is a 2-3 creature from the Legends expansions. One blue, one white, and one green, and two generic to cast. And uh, the card text reads, you may choose not to untap Rubina Soulsinger during your untap step. And you can tap it and then you can gain control of target creature for as long as you control Rubinia and Rubinia remains tapped. Okay, so you can basically use it as a control magic. And I think that kind of control theme is something that you see when you see coming back when you're looking at the deck itself. I mean, you've got the clone, you've got the control magic, you've got the witch hunter that can bounce creatures. You've got preacher that can steal creatures again. You've got spirit link. So he's got a lot of ways of dealing with creatures or stealing creatures which is pretty cool. We also see an Elder Dragon in his list, which of course is fantastic. And uh, cards such as Armageddon can be useful. You know, he's gonna steal your best creatures, then he's gonna take care of all your land so you can't do anything about it. And he's gonna probably win the game with uh, the, the opponent's creature. So in this case, my creature. So it's uh, it's really interesting uh, to see here. We also see a Wrath of God. I think Rubinia is a very strong commander in old school. So uh, this, it, it looks like a tough deck. There are some control elements in, in here. Uh, you know, white and blue is, a, is always a strong combination. Not a lot of green cards in here. I think only the regrowth is the only green card in this deck of Gideon. Also interesting to see, by the way, is that um, um, the altar there, uh, I forgot the name there for three, Ashnot's altar, that's it. Uh, for three mana, you can cast it, and then you can sacrifice a creature to get mana back. Now, obviously, this is gonna work really well with the Preacher and the Rubina Soul Singer. So he can start stealing creatures, feed them to Ashnot's altar, and then steal new creatures. So that actually, that looks kind of scary. I need to, uh, oh, I need to be careful here. Uh, also, I think the land text is a very good inclusion. Um, remember, you're only allowed to play with one non-basic of each. So land fixing could be, uh, mana fixing is always useful in a format like this. So land text could help. Also with the Armageddon, it's a nice combination. And, oh, the Hive, I think the Hive is quite nice. It's an artifact for five to cast. Um, and I believe you've got to pay four and tap to get a 1-1 one, one, uh, Flying Wasp token. Uh, and this, of course, works very well with uh, with Wrath of God. That's kind of a traditional combination, but also uh, with Nevenerals Disc. Um, actually, it doesn't work very well with Nevenerals Disc because it destroys artifacts as well. Okay, forget that I said that. It does not work very well with Nevenerals Disc. But anyway, it works really well against possible board wipes because then you still have your token machine going. And remember, it may seem pretty steep paying 4 for a 1-1 one, one flyer. But, you know, making tokens in old school is actually quite powerful, especially with these singleton games that could go on longer than expected. Anyway, this is the deck of Gideon. Let's take a look at my 60. 
And this is the deck that I am playing with today. So my commander, as mentioned before, is Sinastian Falconer. One green, one red, three to cast. It is a 4-4 four, four creature, so 4-4 four, for four, four, 5. That's pretty reasonable, and you can tap it to add 2 mana. So it's kind of an expensive mana dork. And that was kind of my inspiration for the rest of this deck. I thought, okay, so I've got a commander that makes mana, but it does it until turn 5. So that means at turn 6, I'll have 8 mana unless I can ramp it a little bit. So I thought, okay, let's create kind of a deck around uh, just getting lots of lots of mana and, and cast X spells and cast um, big creatures, basically. So there are a few uh, creatures that I use early game, like a Lanawer Elf, but also the, the Fire Sprites, I believe they're called Fire Sprites, to kind of get my mana fixing right, because Fire Sprites can make uh, one green tap and that gives you a red mana in return, so it can make... Uh, green mana into red mana so that can be useful of course because there's not a lot of uh, dual lands in here you're only allowed to use one i'm actually playing with zero so <laughs> i mean the reason for that is what, when i was making this deck by the way i thought okay i want to do it all uh i, I want to kind of stick to the original set so i didn't want to go into revised or fourth edition whatever just just this is just a little rule that i applied on my on my own while i was building because i noticed i had so many of the original cards and unfortunately, I just don't have a Taiga Unlimited. I have a revised copy, so I didn't include it here. But obviously, a Taiga would be an auto-include uh, in this deck. Anyway, looking, going back to that theme of wanting to create lots of mana. So I thought, okay, if I have lots of mana, uh, I want to have some lands early in to play my commander quickly. So what I've done, I've added Soul Ring, I've added Felwer Stone, I've added uh, Lanawer Elves, I've added those little sprites to make the red mana accessible, and I've also added a mana flare just to get lots of mana going. So hopefully I can play out my commander early and have even more mana to my disposal. And from there on out, I'm hoping to cast big creatures like the Shivan Dragon you see in the deck, like the Colossus of Sardia, like the Fire Elemental. But besides that, of course, I'm also hoping to play like big X spells. And you can see them here on the bottom of the picture. Now, when I'm looking at this, I'm st every time I'm missing Earthquake, so Earthquake definitely Definitely needs to go in here but I just need to find a slot for the earthquake but anyway we've got quite a few X spells here we've got hurricane we've got fireball we've got disintegrate we've got detonate we've got dwarven catapult uh, another X spell that's missing actually is stream of life I don't have an unlimited stream of life so that's that's one on my list that's nice about these formats that you're like oh but for my Senestian falconer singleton deck whatever I need this and this and this I just I just love that about magic that you always get you're always searching for new cards to to expand your collection further and to play more different formats or more more fun decks basically and um when we look at this i also have a little land destruction theme going and my land destruction is really going to be focused on the non-basic lands because we're playing singleton i think that's a good target so i'm playing with fisher fisher can destroy bury an artifact and a creature which is quite good but it can also destroy a land and it's two red and three to cast it's an instant now it doesn't do both you've got to choose but i think it's quite a strong card in this format i'm playing with ice storm i'm playing with stone rain so those are three cards to uh, remove lands of course i'm playing with a strip mine so that's four cards to remove lands and i'm also playing with a scavenger folk and scavenger folk can maybe help me to get rid of a mana rock if but probably there are more troublesome artifacts in this game that i need to remove with scavenger folk but if not i can use scavenger folk uh for that now another card that i'm really looking forward to hopefully being able to cast is inferno i just think inferno is the bomb it's uh i think two red and four to cast and it deals six damage to every creature and every player so it's like my board wipes so i'm really looking forward to casting an Inferno. So keeping my fingers crossed here, hoping to be able to play it. But actually this deck is just full of cards I'd love to play. Like I didn't even mention Wild Growth, which is another great ramp card. Untamed Wild is another great ramp card. So I've got quite some ramp in this deck. And I'd love to, to play that signed uh, Untamed Wilds or Wild Growth, sorry. I'm really looking forward to doing that as well. Okay, so this is my deck. Um, as you can see, my deck is a little bit more big creatures, play big X spells, win the game, versus Gideon, which is definitely more a control deck. So we'll, uh, we'll have a look. We'll see how this is going to pan out. Let's go to the match. Game number one, and it is a best of five. So there are tons of games, tons of singleton fun here for you. And uh, I am the one playing with the fancy playmat because it's just who I am sitting on the right side and Gideon Badass sitting on the left there. 
And the nice thing about Gideon's deck, by the way, is I believe it's built completely out of reprints. So in that way, it's kind of a budget, old school singleton deck. So if you like it, check out the deck deck. Click pause when you see the deck photo and you can actually build it yourself. I think Gideon here is on the play, by the way, taking a mulligan. So that means he'll be going down to, uh, to six cards to start with. Well, he can draw into seven, and then he wants to. If he wants to keep, he needs to put one card on the bottom of his library. The London Mulligan rule. Let's take a look if he's going to keep this. I hope so. Because it's always nice to have a real game of Magic instead of one where your opponent is just uh, mulling down to I don't know four, and you win the game easily. Look at that! What a start here from my side. Pendlehaven into Lunderer Elves, and there we see an Io pile. But I now have the choice to keep my Pendlehaven untapped. Tapping two there for a Fire Sprites. 1-1 one, one Flyer from Legends. And for one green and tap, I can make a red mana. Now, the whole thing is here. Do I want to protect my 1-1 one, one creatures by keeping my Pendlehaven untapped? Which basically means that I have three mana instead of four mana. It looks like I'm attacking now with both. And that means Gideon's dropping to 18 here. And passing turn. I mean, in a way, it wouldn't be that bad if he would use um, his IO pile because I also have that factory. So because of the IO pile, I'm not attacking with the factory right now. Um, anyway, choosing to play a Sylvan Library because I do have enough mana now to play my commander, Sinestian Falconer. But of course, Sylvan is a great card, so it kind of makes sense here. But do we see a counter spell? There is a mana drain here from Gideon. That means he gets two extra lands. And then it's still my turn though, regroving the Sylvan passing turn. Oh, attacking for one as well. That means he's going down to 17. Again, I'm not using my Pendlehaven. I really want to keep my Pendlehaven untapped. Ooh, this is a big move. Remember, he had two extra lands from the Mana Drain. And he is casting a Triskelion here. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he can start pinging down my 1 1s. I mean, he, he knows I've got. Uh, Got the Pendlehaven. What am I going to do? First going to cast Sylvan probably. And I'm going to attack. Am I going to attack here? No, I'm passing turn. Not quite sure what I'm doing, but it looks like Gideon is pinging my sprites for one. In response, I'm making it bigger. And then I'm using my lightning bolt. Because remember, my fire sprites are actually the only way for me to create red mana. So what I really want to do is I just want to get the Io pile and the trike out of the game because they're both super annoying to play against. So now they're gone. But look at that. There's another annoying creature coming from the side of Gideon. That's a Witch Hunter. And that is annoying. And I just don't have any red lands. So what am I going to do? Drawing an extra card, going to 15. And Witch Hunter is a card from the dark, and you can tap it to deal one damage to target opponent, but you can also pay, I believe, two white and one to return a creature, an opponent's creature, uh, to the hand. So it's kind of an unsummon effect. It's quite annoying to play against. So that means like if I would cast my Falconer, I don't even have the red mana to do it, but let's say if 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 I find red mana and I cast my Falconer, Gideon's simply gonna return it back to my hand. So that's not gonna be a solution. In the meanwhile, oh, I found red land here and there's a fireball of one. Wow, using a whole fireball just to get rid of a witch hunter. And there is a power sink here by Gideon and he has got enough land. So I'm completely tapped out and my fireball is countered. So this is a pretty bad scenario for me here. And in the meanwhile, I put the green storage land there on the battlefield. I believe it's called hollow trees. And as long as I'm gonna keep it tapped, it's gonna, the storage counters are gonna be ticking up. And remember, I can untap it in my, uh, in my upkeep, or actually just in my untap step. And then I can choose to tap it again. I can take X uh, mana off, and the X is equal to the amount of storage counters, but I have to take the storage counters off as well. So for example, now it's got three storage counters. I can untap it and say I'm gonna tap it for two storage counters, take two storage counters off and get two mana. Anyway, it's a really good card when you're playing with Burn. Look at, oh, Inferno. This is a card I wanted to, to really cast. I talked about it in the deck tech, but casting an Inferno just to kill one measly creature, the 1-1 one, one Witch Hunter. That is how annoying Witch Hunter is 
in this scenario. So wow, 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 amazing here. And look at my life total, I'm on three. And that is really because I'm just hurting myself all the time. Inferno deals six damage, but I believe I've also taken two extra cards with the Sylvan. So that is 14 damage that I've dealt to myself. That is kind of ridiculous here. Playing a Thicket Basilisk, using the storage counters there from a storage land to also cast the Sinestian Falconer. So now I have two pretty good creatures on the board. And I remember this, this when this happened in the game. Um, he casts a uh, Swords to Plowsiers and I'm taken out of the game. And then all of a sudden we're both thinking, wait a minute, this is a commander. So what actually happens when you use a Swords to Plowsiers on a commander? Now, now we know but I had to look it up. And I'm sure when you're listening to this, you're thinking, why, why don't these players know this one? We never really play with commanders in old school. So this is all a new thing. So I'm looking it up right now. And it turns out that uh, what happens is the commander actually just goes back to the command zone. And, and every time it's it's destroyed or, you know, whatever happens to it, you can bring it back to the command zone. And then you've got to pay two extra mana to recast it. So in this case, it's going back to the command zone. And of course, that changes the situation. So I asked Gideon, do you still want to play your swords to plowsiers with that information? And he actually said no. He said, I'm going to clone it instead. Um, but then there was the legend rule. And he thought, okay, so what's going to happen now if you do that? And he was like, you know what? I'm actually not going to clone it. And I said, yeah, sure, you can take it. You can take it back. You've got to kind of see the scenario we're playing in a in a pub here for the first time in a very long time of course keeping keeping our distance and stuff um but yeah so he's taking it back and i said you know what i'm just going to cast my rubinia soul singer and that's actually really bad news for me so for me the the, the swords was a pretty good scenario because it also brought me back to seven kind of uh allowing me to use uh to maybe use my sylvan as well so the situation is I'm on three. He's got Rubinia's Soul Singer. That means that next turn he can start stealing my creatures. There's a Maze of it. That's actually pretty good. Attacking now with both of my creatures, choosing not to attack with my uh, Mistress Factory, which I think could have been an option as well because I can use the Maze to kind of take it back out of combat if she cho if um, Gideon chooses to block the Maze. So is Gideon going to take six damage? He is, and that means we're both dropping to three life here. This is quite exciting. Next turn, Gideon can steal one of my creatures. And now I'm playing a book, a JM Day Tome. And aye, bad news for me, Disenchant here, but I can use it at least once to get a card back off of it. But that means I am tapped out except for the maze. And I think Gideon's probably going to steal the Sinestian Falconer here. That seems to be the right play. And that's exactly what he does. Stealing the Falconer. It's now in his possession. And then he's playing a clone over the Thicket Basilisk. And I mean, I can still... I'm not going to die or anything. Look at that. Untapping my storage land. So that should give some information here to Gideon. And uh, remember, I'm playing with quite a lot of burn. And he's on three here. So am I able to finish it? He's got blue and two open for a possible power. Well, he's already played his power sink, so you don't have to worry about that. I do know he has a um, Swords to Plowsiers in hand. So he can play a Swords to Plowsiers on his own uh, Sinestian Falconer, which is actually my Falconer. But uh, anyway, he will get four life, go to seven. So if I want to play a burn spell, I need to play a burn spell of seven. I think, I think that's why I'm taking a moment here, really thinking about my outs. And I'm actually tapping my own... No, I'm not tapping my City of Brass. I was surprised here. And I am playing a Disintegrate. And that's that's it. That's the game. And look at that. I had a Hurricane in hand, but that wasn't very useful anymore. So game one here goes to the Sinestian Falconer deck. And the good news is we don't have any sideboard. So we can go straight to game number two. Game number two. And uh, let's see... We are playing a best of five, so even if Gideon would lose this, he's still in the running. So don't forget that. Whatever in the running means, because it's just, just a casual match. But anyway, um, let's see what happens here. Gideon's keeping his hand. No mulligan this time. Basic Island played, passing on to me, and there's a Dwarven Hold. So this is one of the storage lands, and this is kind of the scenario that I want to happen. What I want to do, ooh, Soaring here by Gideon. That's pretty good. I just want to build up tons of mana and then maybe play a huge X spell or even cooler a Sheevan Dragon. I'm hoping that I can cast a Sheevan Dragon. That would be nice. 
Anyway, uh, Safe Haven there, quite interesting. Safe Haven works together really well with that Nevanero's disc, actually. Uh, I think Safe Haven is a little bit underplayed in old school. The problem with Safe Haven is you can only sacrifice it in your upkeep, I believe, and then you get all the creatures back. Uh, but it is really a nice response to anybody trying to remove your creatures. I think I think it could see more play. Let me know what you think of Safe Haven. In the meanwhile, I've cast a strip mine, and again now that's I guess why Safe Haven is a bit of a a weakness here. Look at that very early Rubinia Soul Singer hitting the board here. And I'm waking up a little bit too late, realizing that I can use a strip mine to actually take out one of his colors and using to do white, but it would have helped if I could have done it earlier. Look at this, what am I gonna cast here? Ooh, an early Triskelion. And that is uh, thanks to that storage land. And it is a two, three creature. So that's why I'm using all the three of the counters on the trike to take care of Rubinia. And you see that there's now a dice on Rubinia. That means that next turn, if Gideon wants to summon it, he needs to pay an extra two mana. But I've taken care of his white lands. Again, untapping the Dwarven Hold here. What am I going to play out for five? There, ooh, a Fisher, but a Power Sink. And that's a very important Power Sink here from uh, Gideon because I almost took care of and his white lands and his blue lands. And that would have been crucial. Look at that regroving planes. That's how important the plane system is using a regrowth just to get it back, which is absolutely understandable because he can start casting Rubinia Soul Singer. And he's got there that um, his sacrifice output there with that artifact. I forgot the name again. Let me know. Ashnot's Altar. That's it. Okay. <laughs> Ashnot's Altar. And uh, he can, of course, use his Rubinia Soul Singer to steal. And I believe I played a regrowth there on the Fisher. He can use it to steal uh, one of my creatures and then feed it to Ashnot's Altar. And that way he can grind through all my creatures. It's kind of his own removal factory. And there is Rubinia Soul Singer again. I believe I've taken back Fisher. And oh, playing a Lightning Bolt there. And am I gonna, let me see, there's Fisher again. Am I gonna take care of the White Land? This time I'm going to take care of the blue land so that he cannot counter. I think the white land would have been better because he's already played his power sink. Remember, we are playing singleton. But I guess it was a good decision because he's finding a savannah. And um, what is he going to do next? Just passing turns. So that's good news for me. And looking at my hand here. Now I can just swing in for one. I'm not finding any of my bigger creatures. Because there are quite a lot of bigger creatures in my deck. I'm not finding one apparently. Just playing another land passing turn here. So it looks like I'm kind of dried up here. I need some new fuel. But the same counts for Hido. And perhaps he's waiting for blue land to do anything. And playing a mountain here. I have so much land. If I can dry into an X spell. I think it's already done. Also considering Hido has no... Mountain, uh, no uh, blue mana, I mean, to counter anything that I do. So will that mean it is going to get a 0-2 for me here? Remember, we are playing a best of five. Of course, he has that Nevenero's Disc, but I mean, you're not going to use it on a 1-1 one -one Triskelion. That's like a bit of an overkill. Although I used Inferno just to get rid of a Witch Hunter in game one. And tapping a lot here, a huge Fireball. Is it enough? He's on four, he's on three. I mean, I think I could have waited. And there it is, the hive, which is quite nice. And there is a spirit link <laughs> on my trike. I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do, but there, unfortunately, is a hurricane. Yeah, Hideon was just too low. He wasn't really finding the lands, and I was lucky with my land removal. And you can see like how strong a card like Fisher is in this format. But no worries, it is not a best of three, it's a best of five. So Hideon, you are still very much into this matchup. Let's continue to game number three. Game number three. And I'm two games up. I mean, if I can win this one, if I actually just won zero to three. Let's hope Gideon can get back into this. We want to see some more games. 
at least a good start with the Tundra and City of Brass for me also a good start having access to all the mana there we see Scavenger Folk and a Felwer Stone that Felwer Stone is an interesting target for me because my own City of Brass is making the Felwer Stone very useful and that's exactly why I'm probably choosing to sack my own Scavenger Folk here now remember Gideon is playing oh this is nice um oh, what's the name of this artifact again it's from Fallen Empires two to cast and you can pay one in sack and you can get two mana of any color and there's an ice storm so again i'm attacking his mana base but of course with that fallen empire's artifact right there at least he's got some lands and playing a basalt monolith so that's some mana fixing here for him not too bad basalt monolith three to cast you can tap it and it gives you three mana and then you can pay four anytime to untap it i actually think it's quite a quite a nice card maybe i should play basalt monolith in, in my in my deck as well anyway uh <laughs> let's get back to uh the game actually wow look at that regrowth on my scavenger folk and i just kind of want to attack his mana and look at that he's using it now probably because of that scavenger folk getting a rubinia soul singer out the two three commander and i wonder what i'm going to do and i'm actually going to use it here on his Basil Monolith. I could have waited for Gidon possibly to use his Rubinia Soul Singer. Then again, I didn't want Gideon to start the turn with those three mana from the Basil Monolith. So, ooh, this is kind of interesting. So first I'm trying to make sure he doesn't get a lot of land and then, <laughs> then I'm playing a Mana Flare. Okay, it's a little bit inconsistent, but you know what? Oh, unfortunately a quick disenchant from Gideon. I want to say, you know what? Maybe I just need it and I've got a lot of Remember, I've got a lot of double casting costs, like double green, double red kind of creatures in my deck. Fire Elemental, Shivan, Thicket Basilisk, Cockatrice. So there is a book. Okay, that's pretty good. Ooh, Mana Drain. And here we can see a control portion of Gideon doing the work. Disenchant, Mana Drain, kind of taking care of the board here. Having Rubinia on the board to steal whatever I cast. And he's playing the Hive. I'm going down to nine. Things are not looking great for me. And I think this is kind of the way Gideon wants his deck to work. And you can see I was trying to attack the mana base again at the start of this game. And, ooh, this is quite nice. Dwarven Catapult here. Uh, one red and X instant. And it destroys, it deals X damage divided evenly to my opponent's creatures. And I'm actually explaining that it would have been nice to wait for him to have a lot of little 1-1 one -one wasp tokens as well with that... Uh, with the Dwarven Catapult, but I just don't have the luxury to do that. I really want to get rid of Rubinia here. And am I actually gonna attack? I'm just deciding not to do reasonness that I just don't want to lose my Mistress Factory. Then again, Gideon has already played Disenchant. And this is kind of interesting when you don't play this format often, like I hardly ever play Singleton, you're like, wait, he's playing with white. I'm just not gonna use my factory. I'm just gonna pass turn. But I need to think, wait a minute, He's playing with white, so he's got disenchant, maybe a divine offering, but that's about it. Anyway, going through his deck now, because he wants to find a token card for his 1-1 one, one wasp, wasp token, but the conclusion is just use an upside-down magic card for that, it's fine. So this is a 1-1 one, one flyer from Gideon, and he does this end of turn. And I mean, those flyers are actually pretty good, because he can out deal one damage. And I mean, look at my life total, I'm on 7, and Gideon is on 20 still. So things are not looking good for me. And um, I just kind of feel like in the early game, I lost, kind of lost control. Took a lot of damage. And what can I do next? Casting a Suchi. Oh no, casting my Senestian Falconer instead, deciding to go for the mana. Doesn't mean I take a damage going down to six here. And I think he can swing in for two now. And that's exactly what he does. That means I'm going to four measly life. And things are not looking great for me. And there's a control magic on my falconer. Ooh, I think I'm dead. What can I do? I need a hurricane for one. Tapping five cockatrice, perhaps. That could be a solution. Fisher on my own Senestian falconer. And of course he's feeding it. And here you can see the nice combo. He's feeding it to Astronaut's Altar using two of those mana to create a wasp token. And I'm on one measly life. Even a hurricane can't help me because I'm gonna kill myself in the process. 
playing a Suchi, attacking for one, but he's going to make a Wasp token. And playing a Lantex. Ah, that's it. And actually, when I was playing this game, I was like, why didn't I board in a Pyrotechnics? Pyrotechnics from Legends would be, would be a great inclusion in my deck, actually. Anyway, it's good. It's good. We're still in. That means we're going to get a game number four. Hidons won this one. One, two. Game number four. And it's one, two here for me. For me. For Timmy. Sitting on the right. <laughs> I wanted to say Hidon, but Hidon won the last game. Uh, so it's one, two. Best of five. Taking a mulligan here. Okay, changing my mind. <laughs> anyway, I am taking a mulligan, starting with six in hand, basic mountain. And uh, in that game number three, you could really see that control element of Gideon's deck, you know. Counter spells, disenchants, uh, control magics, Rubinia doing her work, and then it's really difficult to play against it. And uh, pretty good start here for Gideon. He is missing uh, white mana though, and I'm also just casting lands. There's a Mishra's Factory. And Hideon passing turn here and tapping five. There's my Senestian Falconer. That means that next turn I've got seven mana, maybe even eight. Ooh, look at this air elemental, beautiful creature, 4-4 four, four flyer. And of course that white land here, attacking with the Senestian Falconer, he decides to trade. I'm actually fine with that. 4-4 four, four on the ground for a 4-4 four, four flyer. And tapping six here for a Triskelion. So things are looking pretty good. So if he's going to cast his Sines or Rubinia Soul Singer, his commander, I can use my uh, my trike to kill her straight away. So he's probably not going to do that. Maybe casting a Disenchant or yeah, or a Swords. Anyway, dealing three damage to uh, to Gideon in response means he's going to drop to seventeen, and I'm going to take a life. He's also going to attack me, dropping down to nineteen here. Let's see what else I can find. And there is a wild growth. And yeah, I'm really happy with my wild growth. It's nice. It's uh it's signed, it's in good condition. I recently traded traded it, so I'm I'm really happy. It's always nice to play a card that you've uh, that you just owned. And am I gonna do anything with all this land? That's kind of the big question. I mean I've got so much mana. But I'm not, I'm just passing turn here. But the same can be said here for Gideon. He's probably going to cast his commander, right? Or is he? does he have anything useful? No, there's his commander, Rubinia Soul Singer, and attacking me for two here. So I'm going to drop down to 17. And do I have a bolt or anything to deal with Rubinia? I don't think I have. Going through my hand. I mean, I can cast Sinestian Falconer again, but it's just going to be stolen. And doing a strip mine on the factory. I kind of want to buy some time to draw into something to get rid of Rubinia Soul Singer. And uh, is he going to attack for two here? Dropping me down to 15. There's a Nevenero's Disc. And yeah, he's attacking me here. In response, there is a Fisher. And no counter spell here from. Uh, from Gideon, but of course he could just cast it next turn. And what am I gonna do here? I'm deciding to cast my Falconer again. And I'm expecting, can he recast um, Rubinia Soul Singer? It's now seven land. I think he's got enough mana for that. But he's gonna do something else, playing a regrowth over the air elemental, casting the air elemental. Air elemental, of course, 4-4 four, four flyer, strong creature here. And if he then next turn can also cast his Soul Singer. Ay, 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 ay. And let's see, what am I going to do here? If I use my direct damage on the Air Elemental, it means I cannot use it on the on Rubinia when she comes back into play. So I probably don't want to do that. I guess I am doing that. I'm casting a Dwarven Catapult. And then attacking for four. That means Gideon's going to drop to 13 here. And of course, uh, the reason is I'm not playing it in his turn because Dwarven Catapult is an instant is I just want to make sure that he cannot counter it. He hasn't um, played a single counter spell yet. So, and this is interesting because he needs to pay the extra mana here for the Rubinia Soul Singer. So I think we kind of missed that here because it looks like he's only playing f paying five and he should pay, um, 
should pay the extra mana here. But anyway, it doesn't really matter that much for the game. And, ooh, in response, he's going to cast it. I'm a little bit surprised, but of course, he doesn't want to take the damage of the detonate here. So that was a detonate. Detonate a card from Antiquities, one red and X, and the X is the amount of the casting cost of the artifact you want to get rid of, and then it deals that much damage to the opponent as well. So it's actually quite a nice card. And look at that, a recall. What is he going to take back? An Air Elemental and a Nevenerals Disc. And casting a Lightning Bolt here. So Gideon's dropping to six measly life. Not sure about the Lightning Bolt. What else do I have in hand? I mean, there is a Sprite. Oh, now I understand. I'm casting Wheel of Fortune, which of course is quite nice after that recall. That means he's going to lose that Air Elemental and have a Neural Disc, but I am giving him a full grip of cards. Playing a Soul Ring here. Can I cast something else? Still having three lands. Going through my graveyard, so it looks like I found a Regrove perhaps in my hand to get something back here. The Fisher is in the graveyard. Okay, deciding not to cast anything. Just passing turn. But now I understand the Lightning Bolt as well. And let's see, what is he going to do? Paying three here. Ooh, a Preacher. Ah, oh, at least Preacher lets me choose. You know, you can tap Preacher and then I have to give him one of my creatures. Now, right now I only have those Fire Sprites, so that's what I'm going to give him. But let's first attack. Two more damage. He's going down to four. What else can I do here? Going through my hand, going through the motion. And looks like we have a little bit of a discussion, probably explaining why I cast the Wheel of Fortune. And tapping two here, playing a regrowth, probably over over the bolt, playing a bolt. And I that is bad news for me, that mana drain. That is bad news. Am I going to cast something else? Okay, also casting a Suchi here. And he's got one extra mana because of the mana drain. At least I didn't take back a Fisher because then he would have gotten five extra lands. That would have been way worse. Paying five land now, five mana, casting the Triskelion. Of course, having the extra mana. Pinging, oh, pinging my sprites, taking control. Oh, man. This is bad news. Bad, bad news. I mean, I was hoping to kind of giving, give him my, uh, my fire sprites. But that didn't happen. Ay, 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 ay. Tapping four, playing the jam day tome. I guess I can cast my commander, my falconer. It's a 4-4 body. It's better than nothing. Paying 5. There's a cockatrice. Okay, that's pretty good. It's also a flyer. And remember, remember, my opponent is on just measly 4 life. And why not also cast a falconer here? Deciding not to. That's quite interesting. Maybe, oh, it's got a counter on. So I've probably got to pay 7 to cast it now. And I only have 6 mana available. And there's an attack with both. I mean, does he have something like a giant growth? I'm actually just taking the damage here. I don't want to take the risk of losing my cockatrice. He also has a gem day tome. I mean, I there we see the hive. Oh, the hive is so annoying because it's like it's like for five land you can just chum block any creature. Paying four here, clay statue. I mean, at least I can regenerate the clay statue. It's not too bad. And deciding to draw a card there off the jam day tome. And I mean, I'm so close, but I want 10 as well. And I mean, he's got the book, he's got the hive. Tricky, 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 tricky. Basically, I need just need next spell. And look at that, he's attacking right now. These are my blocks regenerating my clay statue. And that does that mean that the trike is going to die here? 
then he will probably ping me for two, right? Bringing me to eight. Looking at his hand, does he have a giant grove or something? Actually pinging me here exactly. Going to nine. And pinging my cockatrice here. Ah, that's why he's doing it. So he's pinging my cockatrice as well so that he can kill it with the IO pile. It wouldn't have mattered much, by the way. But he wanted. To, he wants to keep it. He wants to keep the trike at least a two-two, so he can kill my cockatrice. And look at that, a Mahamoti Jin here. Oh, bad news for me. Bad news for me. I need a hurricane, and I can just win this one. I'm not finding it, I guess. Instead, casting a Mountain Yeti. That's pretty good news. Protection. Uh, protection from white. Uh, wow, wow, wow. This this game is so close. He can now swing in with his Maamoti Jin. Then I'm going to drop to four life. I can attack him with the Yeti. Then he's going to be on one, which is not enough. Wow, what a game. What a game. Hurricane! Oh, no, Hurricane. Oh, not a Hurricane. Oh, this is the worst thing that could happen. So I'm regenerating my clay statue and putting all those regeneration shields on it. If you're wondering why there's three on there. Oh man, this is worst case scenario. Finding City of Brass. I'm on four life. Playing Stone Rain on his forest and that's it. Oh man, that hurricane. Ar Ar Armageddon. <laughs> well played, Gideon. So Gideon came back from a 0-2 to a 2-2. And we're now going into the fifth decisive game of this singleton matchup. Game number five, the decider. And oh my, has this game changed? I mean, I was 0-2 up, very confident. Now it's 2-2. That Armageddon, oh man, I was so happy with my Mountain Yeti. Anyway, let's look. Wow, great start here from Gideon again with that, I think, isn't it called Ritual of Sacrifice? That um, Fallen Empires card there. He can sack it for one, one sack, and gain two uh, color, uh, two mana of any color they choose. So he sacked it here for white, basically, and there's a Preacher early game. Ice Storm here, so again, I'm trying to attack his land base. But he's instantly finding another land, basic island here. And there is a jam day tome for me. That's actually pretty good. And he's swinging in with his smaller creatures, it looks like. And there's the Ashnot's Altar. Great combination here. So right now he's got Ashnot's Altar and Preacher on the board. That's a very strong combo. And the only color he's missing from uh, casting Rubinia Soul Singer is his um, is green mana, actually. And I'm not casting a commander probably because he can just use his preacher so I'm first looking for removal to take care of the preacher before I want to cast anything or I want to cast a smaller creature because remember with preacher I can actually choose so attacking right now Mishra's factory preacher and sage of Latinam deciding to draw a card first trying to find an answer here. going down to 10 disenchant on the book things are looking bad for me what's happening here I was 0-2 up but no, seriously, great deck, uh, Gideon, and you can really see the power of control, and I'm constantly trying to, to go for answers. Oh, an Inferno again! Uh, you gotta love Inferno. And I think I should have waited um, for Gideon here to animate his factory. The reason I'm not, probably. And there is a balance, taking care of tons of land and my hands. Oh, because his hand is empty, so it's kind of like a mind twist. Oh. Oh, dropping to two here, and that's it. That's game number five. Ah, oh, ridiculous. Okay, this game went so fast. It's just re what happened? What happened? Anyway, uh, Gideon, man, great magic, great magic, beautiful deck. I really enjoy this format, by the way, because you get to play with cards you usually don't play with, and I think we're gonna expand this to a hundred card commander. I've seen a really nice blog post by the Brothers of Fire located in London. Um, they've actually been experimenting with uh, old school magic and, and Commander or Highlander or whatever title you want to want to give it. It's quite interesting. If you want to know more about that, there are links in the description below. For now, thank you for watching. Let me know if you like this type of games, if you like this type of matches. They may be, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll put some more of it on the channel if I play some more and I'll make some more different decks. For me, it was a really nice experience. Uh, the reason, by the way, why I didn't play that Inferno in Gideon's turn is because it was afraid of a counterspell. But 
Yeah, I think I should have played towards my outs, to be honest, because he only had one card in hand. So anyway, it doesn't, it wouldn't have changed much because of the whole balance situation. But um, congratulations, Hidon, on winning this one. And once again, if you like this type of content, let me know in the comments below. If you want to support the channel, um, you can also become a channel membership. So you can support it by becoming uh, a patron, but you can also become a channel member, by the way. So whatever is easier for you. So if you want to support the channel, if you want to become a sponsor, you can do it through YouTube or you can do it through uh, Patreon. I've kind of kept the tier levels as similar as possible. And I also will be adding both channel members and Patreons onto the end scroll. Okay, so that's that. Um, if you have any questions about this, again, just comment, let me know. You can also comment in the, in the community line. Just let me know, always happy to hear from you. And talking about patrons and channel members and supporters and sponsors, and which it's going really well, by the way. Let's go and meet these people, see who these people are, these people that are keeping the channel afloat. Let's go to the end scroll and see the amazing, fantastic patrons and channel members. Of Timmy Talks. Watch